This switch has four 2.5 gig ports and two SFP Plus 10 gig ports on it. It's unmanaged and currently on sale here in August of 2024 for 45 bucks, regular price 49. So yes, under $50, you can get two and a half gig and 10 gig and unmanaged means you're not going to be doing anything with vlans on it but if you just need to plug in a few devices this is pretty handy i actually bought this myself back in september of 2023 i've been using it in my lab for a little while it is based on the reviews done by patrick at serve the home i got a little curious about these and going do they actually hold up so there's two parts to this review one let you know that they're less than 50 bucks you can get a switch like this I'll talk about what SFP modules work with it and which ones you might want to avoid. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance our operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, Check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now these inexpensive switches have been coming up and I think they've done a great job over at Serve the Home. You'll find a link to a whole roundup they have for a big variety of them. And I wanted to center in on this one is because one I've tested over quite a few months here. So if you're curious about buying one, yeah, I would say definitely if you're looking for a cheap switch, go ahead and buy it. So too long didn't watch the rest of this video, if that's all you wanted to know, I haven't had any issues. But there are certain issues, not with the switch, but with certain modules using it. Now, as far as the RJ45 ports go, you get a green light when you link the one gig to the RJ45, yellow for two and a half gig. That's worked perfectly fine, no issues. When I'm using the SFP Plus gauges, whether it links at one gig or 10 gig, I always get a green light. And I've tried a variety of modules with it, no issues with any of them, worked perfectly fine, except when I start using these. When you're using the RJ45 to SFP Plus adapters, they get crazy hot. And you're probably thinking, yeah, Tom, those generally have a little bit of a heat dissipation issue and you'll get warnings in some devices about the heat problem that this can cause. This is a little different. I can plug these into several of my switches and they do work. And yes, there is some heat from them. The difference here is the heat is immediate. And I mean, it gets so hot, you can't touch it. I actually dropped one pulling it out when I was uh, testing it. Now, this was a while ago and I've tested it again with several more that I bought to make sure it wasn't a fluke. But whether I use the Microtik one, FS.com one, or a QSFP tech one, all of them did the same thing. They immediately go to like a really hot temperature. Now I don't leave them in too long. So I'm kind of worried that it will damage them and I don't really want to destroy them. So I don't know how long their life would be at that level of heat, but any of the other modules I've tried all work perfectly fine, DAC or fiber, no heat issues there. Just with these little RJ45 adapters. Now, as far as what's inside the little metal box, take a few screws apart. You can see the electronics are fairly packed in here and the heat dissipation is assisted with that metal base of the switch so you have a little thermal pad to help pull heat away one heat sink in there and obviously no fan so silent operation bonus for that now as far as wattage goes this is about a six watt device with sfp plus cages filled up and a few devices plugged into the rj45 so you're not talking about anything that's got much power draw. The switch itself stays relatively cool, even under load. As far as the speed goes, the two and a half gig ports worked as expected at two and a half gig. No problem connecting devices to the 10 gig ports and getting the full line speed out of the device. So that was kind of as expected. Generally speaking, these switches don't have a problem just passing straight traffic because, well, there's no VLANs, there's no inner VLAN routing or no other issues with it. Now, if you're wondering about what would you get if you spent a little bit more, I know Patrick has a long list of them out there that do have some management interfaces but honestly once you go a little bit more expensive i would go with the micro ticks if you're looking for that something that does have vlan management something that does offer a lot more features and this is going to be better documented than some of those oddball switches because this switch currently goes under the name yunli but there are several other ones very similar and the 
documentation is probably not going to be great for these versus something like the Mikrotik. Now in my hand, and I've reviewed this a long time ago and I've been using it ever since on and off kind of poor projects and as needed. This is the CRS305-1G-4S plus IN and goes for about $133 right now on Amazon. Now, of course, this model only has four SFP plus 10 gig ports and one RJ45 one gig port. And maybe you need something with that two and a half gig connectivity. Makertech does have the CRS310 8G plus 2S, goes for $195, has eight two and a half gig ports on there and two SFP plus 10 gig ports. So I think those are good alternatives for someone who wants to spend a little bit more money. But for those of you that are looking for that sub $50, like the title says, that is this switch right here. I think it's a pretty good value. But what do you actually think? Leave those thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com. They have a more in-depth discussion about this or other topics. And I'll see you later. Thanks.